I've said this before and a lot of good presenters know you want to use data and charts on your slide, making your slides visually appealing. You don't want to have huge paragraphs of text on your slides. However, at times it is valuable to use a lot of text on your slides or at least use primarily text-based slides for a variety of reasons. For instance, if you want to create an executive summary or provide the key insights from, from the data you've analyzed or process slides like next steps, they're primarily text-based. And in this video, I want to talk about how to make your text-based slides beautiful and make them more appealing, more compelling to your audience. And this is especially important because audiences hate reading text. Too much text, too much information on a slide is the number one complaint audiences have about presentations. When they don't like a presentation or they're bored, it's usually because there's too much information on the slide and usually it's too much text as opposed to having nice charts, nice visuals, pictures, graphs on a, on a slide. But as I said, from time to time, text-based slides are important to, to create a compelling message for your presentation. And so this is why I wanna focus on text-based slides, how to make them beautiful, and how can you can use them in your presentations. And I'm gonna do this by doing a life exercise where I use a long paragraph and show you step-by-step step how you can turn a long paragraph, ugly slide into a more compelling slide by using bullets, icons, selective bolding. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna recap the key steps or the key tactics that you can apply whenever you create text-based slides. In this life exercise, I wanna use this paragraph and talk about how could you make this paragraph more compelling, more insightful. Here we received an email where somebody told us the key issues or the key reasons why sales have declined. And at the end of the, the email, it says, can you create a slide based on these insights? I think that's a very common, a common task where somebody wants you to create a slide about something, about the key issues we've identified or about your analysis, what are the key insights. And the first step we always want to do is distill the key ideas. What are the three, four, five ideas that we want to convey here? He already lays out the key issues. So why have our sales declined last year? They mentioned that the sales reps frequently complain about their below market pay is one. They think that competitors pay more. The next one, they also found out that the sales reps are less productive than competitors and turnover is high. They're also talking about the cumbersome CRM system, customer relationship management system. It was a paragraph before, very long. You had to read the whole paragraph to figure out what are the ideas, how do they relate to each other? And now we know there are three reasons for the sale decline, or that at least we believe are the reasons for it and it caused it. Now at the top, I would probably just describe quickly what this is. Three reasons for sales decline, or you could also say sales organization issues, and then change it to bullet points for now, just so it's a little easier. So like I said, the first part is to figure out what are the ideas? What are the key messages we wanna, wanna convey on, on a slide? And that doesn't matter if it's a text-based slide or a chart or a visual. You wanna be clear on like what's the overall message of the slide and then what are the key ideas supporting that message? And here the, the key message is, say it's organization issues or we identified three issues within our sales organization. And then the ideas are like one is related to pay, the other one is related to productivity, and the last one, IT system. Let's make this a little more obvious so it's clear what the themes are. And the next step you wanna think about is how do these ideas relate to each other? Are they three distinct ideas and there isn't a direct relationship or does one follow the other? 
it could it could almost be okay we like issues we don't pay them enough and the IT system is cumbersome and that results in overall low productivity and turnover people leaving because their pay is too low and the IT system has a bad user interface. For instance, here, this is like how you would structure the sequence of ideas if it was one leads to the other. Like low pay and the, the, the systems, like with the issues, that leads to low productivity and morale, and then that leads to high turnover and sales decline. That's what was a little bit in the email, right? The sales decline, there's a, like our sales have declined, like why? And so you could identify, it's probably because of the pay and the systems, and the productivity and morale is, is a result of the low pay and cumbersome systems. And that leads to a sales decline. I think that's a compelling argumentation. And here in the title, you could synthesize the slide as low pay and cumbersome systems lead to sales decline. Here you could add some additional insights. Probably, probably would have to do a little bit more work figuring out the, the specifics, the reasons for it. This was obviously, this was one way to structure it. The other way would be to say, there are all three distinct issues and we have to tackle them separately. Then I think it's a very standard approach to just have three bullet points or three, three lines horizontally, or you could also do it vertically, but let's start with doing it horizontally. Once we've identified the ideas, the three ideas, and then the sequence, how do they relate to each other, the hierarchy? The next step is to think about formatting. How can we use formatting to, to make this slide more compelling? Just easier to look at, easier to understand the ideas. What I usually do is give it some, some white space, use icons, selective bolding, and then probably reword it a little bit. And so the first step is I would probably add some white space here. I can make this a little bit more like this, yeah. And then what I like is using icons. I already prepared a couple icons. This would obviously take some time to, to look up some icons and then format them properly. The idea behind icons is they are a quick visual representation of the idea. So here the first point is about compensation, about pay. So then I'm just using an icon that, that's about money, about compensation. So then it's quickly clear, okay, the first bullet is about money, pay, cash. Then the second point, is about the IT system. Here I would probably use the other one, like this one here. Move this one up. So this one looks like, like IT. Here it's a website, a, a platform portal, and the little settings icon, the cloud in the background. So this just represents IT, a system. And then the last one is about productivity. Here you could also think about a, a clock. By, by combining, I think this icon is, is fairly straightforward. It's a person and then there's a little bit of a, there's a little icon, a little clock here showing that it's about time productivity. And this already, just by adding some icons, it makes the slide just more compelling. It's easier to understand because you can quickly look at the icons and you get a little bit of a sense what the issues are. And it's just more appealing to look at. So the next step is to make the, the wording a little better, a little pithier. So for instance, here below market pay, probably you could say sales reps are dissatisfied with their compensation, their below market compensation. And then maybe selective bolding, below market compensation is the issue. The next issue could say the CRMIT system is cumbersome or maybe the CRM user interface is cumbersome a little bit more specific and lastly I mean the staff has lower productivity than competitors and maybe increase the font size a tad Oh, that's probably too big. Let me make the first one also one line. It's a little cleaner. Maybe the first one, this is a little, feels a little long, dissatisfied with their compensation. Now they're almost all the same length, which is nice, all in one line. We have an icon here. 
And now stepping back and looking at this slide and comparing it to the slide we had in the beginning, the long paragraph, just the email being pasted on a slide. This is obviously a way cleaner, way nicer to look at, and it's also easier to present. So you can clearly open the slide with, we've identified three issues and then goes issue by issue. And even your audience will probably be able to quickly, quickly understand the three things and, and digest them and also remember them as opposed to presenting a long paragraph with the text. I hope this life exercise was helpful for you to see how you could actually do a transformation of a ugly word heavy slide and turn it into a concise three bullet slide with icons. I think it looks way better than the slide before. And we talked about the three tactics that, that you should do when you think about a text heavy slide, a slide that, that presents ideas, insights is to first, distill the key ideas, the key messages of your slide. Like what are the three, four, five things that you want to convey on the slide and write them, write them, them out in bullet points. And then number two, what's the hierarchy between the ideas? How do they relate to each other? Is it a sequence of, of four or five steps or are they distinct ideas? Do two or three of them belong together? Are they part of a cluster of ideas and then another cluster that helps you to structure the, the slide? And then lastly, use formatting to, to improve the readability of the slide and make it consistent across your slides by using icons, selective bolding, etc. And lastly, you can spend hours on making slides better, improving them, spending extra time on it. Make sure that you think really thoughtfully about how important is this slide and how much time you want to spend on it. Unless you are in consulting or the slide is really, really important, you don't want to spend too much time improving the slide because in the end of the day, the message is definitely the most important thing about a slide and about a presentation. What is your action title? What's your message of the slide? And what are the key ideas? Spending a lot of time figuring out good icons, restructuring it, aligning all the boxes is makes the slide better, but you also should think about what's, what's the most important value that you can, you can bring to a presentation, to a slide. So don't overdo it. If it's an important slide, just do some quick fixes here and there. Like I, I showed you today, it shouldn't take too long. Maybe you should spend five to 10 minutes per slide to, to move it up to the next level and get it to 80, 90%, but don't spend two hours to get it from 95% to hundred percent. As always, let me know any thoughts, questions, feedback in the comment section. I would love to hear from you and I hope to see you in the next video.